It is ordered that all persons whatsoever that have cards, dice, or tables in their houses shall make away with them before the next court under pain of punishment. For preventing disorders arising in several places within this jurisdiction, by reason of some still observing such festivals, as were superstitiously kept in other countries, to the great dishonor of God and offense of others, it is therefore ordered by this court and the authority thereof that whosoever shall be found observing any such day as Christmas or the like, either by forbearing of labor, feasting, or any other way, upon such a countenance as aforesaid, every person so offending shall pay of every such offense five shillings as a fine to the county. So what exactly is Stardust on about? Well, those were references to legal decrees made by the Puritans in the 17th century. And there's just two instances of, of many. And the Puritans were, to say the very least, very extreme in their views. They had extreme views about pretty much everything. In addition to the things mentioned, you could be executed for committing adultery. You could face steep penalties for not engaging in the proper work commitments that, that you had promised to get done. And the list is endless. The first two instances I mentioned were a case of gambling and Christmas, Christmas itself, that joyous festival everyone loves so much. Well, the Puritans didn't like it. In fact, they banned it in 1659. In fact, what we might call the Puritans as a whole or the context of the Puritans would be a kind of cancel culture. They were an extreme form of cancel culture for their time. If you were born at the time in their community, you would have been subject to all sorts of things that we, of the current year, the modern, modern era, would think of as anathema, to say the very least, if not outright intolerable, ranging from anything you can imagine, from the most conservative among us to the most liberal left wing, etc., etc., the Puritans were just right up there in terms of what they considered worthy of being canceled and what they considered not to be. And I bring this to your attention to discuss an idea of cycles of cancel culture. Because throughout history, you can always observe either an ascendant dominant political ideology or a general orthodoxy that most people conform to. And within that orthodoxy and within that ascendant belief system, there are people who do not necessarily adhere one to one to the belief system to varying degrees. And these people, of course, are the heretics. I use the term heretic loosely here, but the point I'm trying to make is that whether it was living in the high Middle Ages under Catholic orthodoxy or living under the Puritans under Puritanical orthodoxy or even growing up in ancient Sparta, there were rules you had to conform to. There were expectations. For example, in the Puritanical community, blasphemy was a very real sin indeed. And the reason why I mention this is because as much as I'm personally not a fan of modern cancel culture or postmodern cancel culture, if you wish to call it that, or anything resembling it, it is at the end of the day part of this cycle. We can observe throughout history that at times certain ideologies, worldviews are ascended and other times they're not. And so, for example, in the context of the United States, if you were an avowed communist in the 1950s in the United States, an actual communist, you might have been in serious trouble. Even if you had sympathies, you might have been in serious trouble. Everyone can remember McCarthy, Senator McCarthy, and his witch hunt for the communists. And the reason why that didn't seem that big a deal was because there was a normative view that communism was bad, and this view was largely upheld by the population at large, which is to say most people fell into this view, whether through propaganda or personal conviction, irrelevant, they believe that. And in general, there's always going to be some underdog, some minority set of opinions or views that run counter to the majority's views. The question is, is it any different this time around? Which is to say, yes, we've had these cycles throughout history. We've had underdogs and overdogs. We've had people who did not agree with the standard of the times. And the question really arises, is this just another part of the cycle? Well, yes, 
in some sense, the current year politics, SJWism, far leftism, etc., it's just part of the cycle. It's just that there's a new underdog. But lest I leave it at that, I do think there's something somewhat unique going on with the current day politics and current day SJW politics specifically, which is to say there are actually several differences when we observe the current year politics compared to previous times of hegemonic worldviews. For example, the fact that in general, the people who actually believe this stuff, the really extreme stuff that is, in terms of far left progressive politics, they're relatively small in number. It is not a majority view by any stretch. Yes, they wield disproportionately large influence and enormous power relative to their numbers. But that's not an indication of the numbers themselves. But if we were to compare that to former times, well, in former times, the hegemonic view typically had more currency amongst the population, which is not to say it was a perfect reflection in the population. So, for example, if we were to go back several hundred years, back to a point in time when the Catholic Church had a lot more authority in Europe, you could have your average person who is a believer, who believes in the basic principles of Christianity, the basic principles of Catholicism, but is probably not a perfect reflection of the orthodoxy or the precise views of the church, but nonetheless he largely supports them. At least he's a God-fearing, Christian-believing man in this case. And so you might at the elite have more precise, specified forms of beliefs that are hegemonic, but the population often reflects those to varying degrees, but there's some connection there. What we have here with current-day progressive politics is a large disconnect the vast majority of people do not connect or feel at all in touch with far-left progressive politics. They are, if anything, taken back by it, shocked and scared, if not outright opposed to them. And this leads us to the other strange element to this concoction, which is to say, generally speaking, in terms of former times, when you had a hegemonic worldview or an orthodoxy in place and the political halls of power, it typically wanted to maintain the status quo and targeted smaller groups of people that had differentiated views or were heretical, if you will. The thing about modern progressivism is it targets the vast majority of people. No one is really safe unless you fit precisely, perfectly into that camp of progressivism, which is to say, if you're conservative, you're bad. If you're left of center, you're bad. If you're just a normal liberal, you're bad. All these categories are viewed as negative as long as it doesn't fit perfectly into progressive politics. And so what you have here, what is anomalous historically, is this very strange scenario where you have this small minority of political activists wielding enormous power over a large majority of people who do not necessarily agree with the core tenets of the policies or the politics being preached to them. In contrast to former times when you had some major view held in the halls of power that was largely reflected in the population to various degrees, it's quite the opposite now. Now that makes the current situation reasonably unique compared to other historical situations and scenarios that we can observe in history. The real question is, will this change? And the answer to that is, I think, yes, in time it will, if only due to the nature of cyclical change when it comes to these things. It'll just take a very long time, I suspect, and we will labor under this for quite some time to come. We might be able to rely on the anomalous nature of the asymmetries I've described as a sign that this probably cannot be maintained in perpetuity. But when it comes to these things, it's impossible to know. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. As always, leave a like, subscribe if you've not yet done so, hit the bell icon to be informed of forthcoming videos, and share the video. If I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. May the gods watch over you. Take care. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.